Well, you, you had a kind of an interesting story about going to the movies with Elvis and, and, and uh, oh, yeah. t- t- tell us, tell us about that. I love that story. Well, I, I don't know if uh, it's the same story that I'm going to tell, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I was playing a concert in, um, in West Memphis at a small college there, West Memphis, uh, across the Arkansas line. Mm-hmm. And I get a phone call. Uh, my road manager says, you know, Elvis is guy called up and wants you to come see a movie with him after the show tonight. They rented the Memphian theater. And I'm like, Oh my God. Oh really, <laughs> man? I, Cause I'd heard, you know, all my life about these theater things and he would rent the whole theater and, and, uh, You'd free popcorn and beer and you know, just like wow, <laughs> and I can't believe it and say Elvis I'm gonna sit with him and I had met him you know I met him uh, before that but I'd never really you know got to go out and boogie with Elvis I mean this is cool so I showed up there and uh, uh, got me some popcorn and a beer and uh, walked in I was a little late the thing was just getting started and I walked down the aisle and I see Elvis sitting down there just him and Linda Thompson yep. is just young girlfriend and uh i just walked straight down to that row and i just stepped over the guy at the end of the thing said excuse me and i just walked down (laughs) plopped down next to linda thompson and elvis is on the other side and he had this silver tray that hooked it was made especially to hook over the seat in front of him and set out beautiful hand carved silver tray and he had his popcorn and his beer sitting on it i thought man this is cool and I sat there and watched the movie with him, and it was the first time I'd been able to really sit and talk to him because the rest of the time you'd be around him and the Memphis Mafia was just surrounding him, you know, and right. it was really right. intimidating because every word you'd, they'd hang on every word and you'd be afraid you'd say the wrong thing or something. Wow. And, and uh, they uh, they really didn't want you to get that close to Elvis, I guess, and uh, to be part of that inner circle. But I felt like part of the inner circle. And we laughed, and he was fun to be around, and we laughed at the movie. It was kind of a silly movie anyway, and we made fun of it. and uh, It was just really comfortable. I was so happy to be there. I felt like such an important guy. Yeah. I got up just before the movie was over to go to the men's room, and I'm standing there, and a guy comes walking in, the, the kid that I'd stepped over at the, uh, at the uh, end of the row, and he said, uh, Mr. Davis, you're not supposed to sit on the same row as Elvis. And I said, excuse me? He said, you're not supposed to sit on the same row. Red West and Sunny West don't even sit. You notice they sit two rows back. And I said, did Elvis tell you to to come in here and tell me that? And he said, no, sir. He said, that's just the rule. And, I, and I'm and i supposed to tell you that. And uh, uh, I, I didn't want to embarrass you. Uh, well, I said, you've embarrassed me. You have totally insulted me. And I got really, really incensed about the whole thing. It just irritated me. And, when I walked back out of the place, well, the movie was over and Elvis was standing out there and uh, he says, what's the matter, man? He could tell I was mad. I said, just, I just want somebody to tell me how to get back to my hotel from here because I, I, I don't know and I had a rental car. And um, he said, uh, well, what's the matter, man? And uh, I can't imitate Elvis. I wish I could. <laughs> what's the matter, man? That's pretty good. There you said, go. Uh, I said, I just, uh, I don't need to tell you. I just said, you know, you d- you just don't understand what goes on around you. I don't think you have any idea what goes on around you when you're not looking. He said, what do you mean, man? Well, I said, I was just told that I couldn't sit on the same row with you, that I'd made, it made me feel like a fool. That's what he said. Oh, man, who told you that, man? I said, it don't matter who told me. Somebody told me. And, it, and you know, and I just, uh, you know, it just makes me feel bad. And uh, he says, Man, tell me who did it. I said, no, I'm not going to tell you who did it. He said, well, what can I do to make it better, man? I said, I don't know. Give me your home number. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, uh, Charlie Hodge, give Mac my home number. And Charlie says, what? <laughs> what number? What number? He says, my home number, the one I answer at the house. I don't know what that is. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Charlie... Charlie says, I can't, I, you don't want it. I can't do that. He said, give him my home number. So Charlie turns to Joe Esposito, who is the boss, and he said, Elvis wants me to give him the home number. And Joe says, well, then give it to him. So he writes it down on a matchbook cover and gave it to him. I said, I'll probably never call it, but at least I feel better about having come in here and made a fool of myself. And I wow. Said, uh, he said, well, I'm sorry, man. And I said, okay, whatever. I said, I'll probably never call it. And I never did. 
never called him at home and over the years i you know i've been i went to his home a few times and was there and uh uh met up with him in the dressing room a few times and uh in, in his suite <laughs> the elvis suite which was fantastic uh, over the top, nothing like red flocked wallpaper and black <laughs> toilet fixtures, man. Nothing like that. And uh, I have that in my house right sure, now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you oh, do. everything was all the toilet, you know, the toilet bowl and the sink, and all was black marble oh. and the red and black flocked wallpaper. Man, man. so in that day, man, I thought it was so cool. It's pretty gauche, actually. But, yeah. uh, well, but anyway, that's that was the deal, and I, I still I kept his phone number in my phone book for years after he passed away. Mm. Just to have it there. Just and look to have at it. Him. Yeah. Yeah. So hey, we, we got to take a break. We're here with Mac Davis. We got a lot more great stories and some more music. So stick around. You're listening to the Music Row Show.